All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all honor, glory, and praise unto Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash. Double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone for teaching us this truth to rule well. All right, I was watching the vocab Malone live stream thing, you know, and man, you. They don't have it, man. They they clearly don't have it. All right. And you have a bunch of these uh, Christians call themselves breaking down <laughs> Revelation 7. All right. So let me let me just jump into it because this is what vocab saying. All right. Revelation 7 and 4. And I heard the number of them which were sealed and there were sealed one hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Right. So that's what what he heard. He heard the children of Israel are sealed. Right. So vocab alone is saying, all right, well, well, let's check this out. The first word is I heard. Right. I heard. So that means that he heard it. He didn't actually see one hundred and forty, forty four thousand. You know. The word there heard is. Uh, a cow. To understand. All right. To understand, to hear something, to perceive, to get by hearing to learn, to comprehend, to give ear to a teaching or a teacher, to understand, right? So going up here, it says, after these things, verse one, after these things, I saw four angels standing in the four corners of the earth, hurting the four, uh, the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living power. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Right? So when he heard, it was proclaimed to him. Right? It's something that he took heed to. Of the children of Israel. Now, let, now let, let's go into the scriptures. Like they say, this is talking about not a consistent, uh, um, uh, consistent lineage or whatever the hell he's saying. He's saying it's not actually the children of Israel. And his explanation for it is complete bogus because he's saying it like 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 John said, he saw the, the lion of the tribe of Judah slain as a lamb. Like that doesn't make sense. How are you a lion and a lamb at the same time? <laughs> Idiot. You know? Completely through. And that's just Esau Edom, man. Alright, and you have these dumbass Christians that are trying to come into this into this no. All right. And trying to make seem like they know. All right. And I asked a couple questions on the comment board. All right. First of all, I asked, what is the, the mark of the beast? No one answered. Got ignored over. All right. Second one was, what is the name of the most high? They didn't answer. All right. I had a couple questions that I stated there and a couple of people came up against and they were like, well, you don't need the Hebrew and you don't need this, this and that. And you don't need this and you don't need that. And I was like, OK, well, well, why does scripture say this? No answer. You answer it. Right. And how does the most high communicate to to people? Well, the most high communicates in many ways. Well, what is it? No answer. Right. Because they don't have the answer. But according to the first book of Esther, chapter one, verse 51, the most high communicates to his people by way of the prophets. Right. And to the nations by the way of the prophets. Same thing with Hebrews, chapter 11, the most high communicates to the people by the way of the prophets. Right. So who are the prophets now? You know, first and foremost, who are the prophets? Not Vokab Malone. He doesn't go into prophecy. Right. So who's actually going into prophecy and breaking it down correctly? What is the mark of the beast? That's the more important one that that's coming up. What is the mark of the beast? If you can't break it down through scripture, then you're not a prophet. Right. You don't understand the scriptures, man. So it says one hundred and forty four thousand of the tribes of the children of Israel, and that word children is hijos, which in Spanish, hijos means sons, sons of Israel, right? It's not daughters, hijas, right? It's hijos, which is hijos in Spanish, which is a son. You see that? So it's only males, first and foremost, vocab, of the tribes, file, a tribe. In the New Testament, all the persons descending from one of the 12 sons of the patriarch Jacob. A nation of people, right? So it's talking about the children of Israel. More specifically, descendants of Israel. He shall be a prince of the Most High. How, how is he going to be a prince of the Most High? 
How is he going to be a prince of the Most High? It's talking about the elect. Zion, out of the nation of Israel, they're going to be the princes, right? Under the king, Yahweh Shai, and under the Most High power, Yahweh, right? That's point blank period, first and foremost. You know, it's not some spiritual thing. He's saying, out of the tribe of Judah were sealed, and then it says a bunch of, a bunch of tribes, and then it says, out of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. And then he jumps to verse 9 saying, and, and after this I beheld and lo a great multitude, which no man could number, of all the nations, kindreds, and people, and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. All right, saying, well, this great multitude is actually talking about the 144,000, which is completely through, completely off. Because the 144,000 are strictly men, men of the nation of Israel, right? We don't have somebody of the nation of Dan. Why? Because Dan was done away with. But the spiritual Israelites, all right, even if you were of the tribe of Dan in your past, you're coming back as another tribe of Israel. You're going to judge as another tribe of Israel, as one of the tribes of Israel, right? And that's what these people don't understand, man. They don't get it. Right. And their thing is, oh, well, you know, if if, if it says out of the the uh, the lion of Judah was slain as a lamb. Right. It's talking about a lion and a lamb. It doesn't make sense. So that's what this is talking about. This is an inconsistent list of Israelites, which is not true, man. You know, it just goes to show how much of a damn devil he is, man. And a bunch of these dumbasses out there. Wow. You have a beautiful breakdown. You know, saying that he silenced the Israelites. A bunch of BS, man. All right. Of the tribe of Judah. All right. Let's look at the word tribe, which is phile again. A tribe, again, in the New Testament, all persons descending from one of the 12 sons of the patriarch, Jacob. Right. So it's a physical thing. You know, so of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000, which that word, uh, dodecachilias, all right, it goes pretty much into 12,000, right? Of the tribe of Reuben. Let's look up the word Reuben. Behold a son, all right? Let's go into the word tribe. Again, Philae of the New Testament concerning the patriarchs, right? The sons of Jacob were sealed 12,000. So this is not talking about great multitude, all right? This is not talking about that great multitude. This is talking about the elect, all right? The elected men of the nation of Israel that are going to be prophesying and preaching this word and this truth. Revelations 14 and 3. And they sung it as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn this song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. Volcan Malone's not going to go into Revelations 14 and go into it. Right? He's going to say, oh no, that 144,000 is symbolic also. It's talking about the great multitude. No, it's not, man. Because the 144,000 are men that were redeemed from the earth. That great multitude are, are people that follow after, right? It says, these are they which were not defiled with women. And they go into Revelations 14 and 4, but not 14 and 3, saying, I guarantee you none of those Hebrew Israelites that claim that they're Israelites are actually virgins. <laughs> what kind of stupidity is this man talking about, man? Those virgins are people that were not defiled, men, Israelites, that were not defiled with these other nations by way of um, of their doctrines, by way of their of their life, of their ways, of heathenistic ways. Why? Because they stayed true to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, right? Once we came into this truth, we didn't go back into the world. It says, these are, which, these are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto the Most High, to the Lamb. Check that out. These were redeemed from among men. All right? It's not talking about just mankind. All right? It's talking about literal men, the men of Israel. All right? And in their mouth was found no guile, for they were without fault before the throne of the Most High. You know? So going back to Revelation 7, when it goes into this list of of Asher, Naphtali, and, and Zebulon, Joseph, and Manasseh, Benjamin. It's actually going into literal Israelites, all right, that are going to be saved 
of the nation of Israel. Right? So it says, uh, let me see here. Verse 9, after this I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, the lamb Salakia, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Now why is Yahweh Shai seen as a lamb? We're all seen as lambs, as sheep led to the slaughter, right? And Yahweh Shai was that lamb that was without spot and without blemish. That means he was a perfect lamb. Right? That means he was meat for sacrifice. That means he was perfect for sacrifice. And that is how we get into the kingdom of heaven by the blood of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Right? We don't get into the kingdom of heaven by, by a lion like Volcan Malone wants to bring out. But Yahweh Shai is of the, the, the tribe of Judah. And he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's the leader. Right? Fucking through, man. These people are, are stupid, you know, and they want to come up against us for no reason. According to according to their doctrine. All right. Saying that they believe in the Bible more than we do. Well, according to the Bible, you're not even supposed to come up against us in the first place. We're not out there trying to convince you guys. Right. We're just doing it to, to, to uh, expose how, how silly you guys are, man. Stupid. You know? So it says, And before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Right? Because we're going to receive that salvation. Now that part they got right. And that's the only thing they got right. It says, And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our power, our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. Right? So Yahweh Shai is going to turn into, into an animal now. Dumbasses, man. You know? Dumb asses. You see? So, we'll go, but going back to Revelation 7 and 9, where it talks about the great multitude that no man could number out of all nations, kindreds, and people, and tongues, right? When you go to the book of Acts, which I brought out, you know, in that, in that uh, silly ass, whatever they were having, it says, Acts chapter 2 and verse 3, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance, right? So you can have different languages, but the name of the Most High remains the same. His name is Yahweh, and the name of the Lord is Yahweh Shai. You know? It's, it's, it, it doesn't change, right? Just like your name may be, you know, uh, Julio, right? When you go to Germany, say they call him Juleos. They're not going to start calling them Juleos. And he doesn't want you to call them Juleos, right? And I'm just making an example. He's going to want you to call him by his name, Julio, right? So the Most High wants you to call him by his name. That's why we praise his name forever. Because his name does not change. The Most High doesn't change, you know? And you have these idiots, well, if he created all these languages, then you can call him whatever you want. Dumbasses, man. Again, Acts chapter 2. In verse uh, 4, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Wait a minute. It's out of every nation. What does nation mean? All right. Is nation Israel? Is Israel just one nation? Is Edom just one nation? Well, it depends how you look at it. Dumbass, man. Through. Right? He wants to bring this out saying, you know, we, we want to confuse the scripture. The scripture is written right here. Acts chapter 2 and verse 5. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, devout uh, uh, Jerusalem Jews. Right? So in Jerusalem, there were Jews. What is a Jew? All right? A Jew is predominantly from uh, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Right? Calling themselves Jews. Jewish belonging to the Jewish nation. Jewish as respect to birth, origin, or religion. Which this thing doesn't even get it right. But it says belonging to Judah. All right. And what was the kingdom of the southern kingdom called? The kingdom of Judah. Right. So if you belong to, to, the, to Judah, to the kingdom of Judah, you were calling yourself a Jew. And it was predominantly the so-called, uh, uh, or not the so-called, but it was predominantly Benjamin and Levi under Judah 
calling themselves Jews. You see? But wait. It says, Jews devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now, why is that? Because we're going to come out of every nation. We were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Right? It goes into uh, Revelations chapter, or not Revelations, Tobit 13 goes into that as well. We were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, man. And that's something these fucking silly ass people can't understand. You know? I basically just went in there just to have a topic to, to speak on. You know, but this is um, Tobit 13 and verse 2. For he doth scourge, he hath mercy. He leadeth down to hell and bringeth up again. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean that the Most High is going to forgive those that he, he cursed forever and ever in hell, according to vocab Malone and these Christians? No, that's talking about he may lead you to hell, which is the earth, the pit, destruction. All right. And he's going to bring you back up again, which is through what reincarnation, right? Neither is there any that can avoid his hand. Confess him before the Gentiles, ye children of Israel, for he hath scattered us among them. Point blank period, man. Straight to the point, right? So Acts 2 and 6. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans, and how we hear every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers in, Mesopot dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and uh, Pamphylia and Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes. Why is that? Because they're Israelites, right? Because they all speak... Um, different languages from different nations under heaven and that's what revelations 14 goes into man it doesn't mean it's literally out of every single nation of, under earth talking about the 18 nations of of, of uh the book of um genesis right it's not talking about the 18 nations as in the people of those 18 nations it's talking about the scattered abroad all right throughout the four corners of the earth all right, so going back to Revelations 7 and verse uh, <clears throat> 9, Revelation 7 and 9, And after this I beheld in lo a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, right? So I went into it in the book of Acts, and guess what? The book of Acts is happening all over again, right? You had people that were living in Turkey that were Israelites. Just like you have people here in the Americas that are calling themselves by other nations, calling themselves by the, the names of the land, and not calling themselves by who they really are, which is Israel. Right? Just like you don't have Edomites today calling themselves Edomites. I'm from the nation of Edom. You don't have Edomites doing that shit. They're calling themselves American, German, French. All right? They're calling themselves by the names of their land or their ancestors that decided to start calling the land by, their, by, that, by that name. Right? It's the same exact thing, man. That great multitude, right? So you go to uh, the book of Ezra, which it is canon. All right, and I believe it was Second Ezra 16. It says, or was it two? It might have been two. It's a lock in. Probably two, because I know it was actually first. Not the first Ezra two. Nope. No, no, no. My my fault. My fault. My fault. It was second Ezra uh, sixteen, and it was verse forty on down. Uh, it says, O my people, hear my word, make you ready to thy battle. In those days, evils, um, 
evils be even as pilgrims upon the earth. He that selleth, let him be as he that fleeth away, and he that buyeth as one that he will lose. Salakia. Uh, scripture ex es escaped me. Yep. Second Ezra was thirteen, and let me start off at verse. 37, and this my son shall rebuke the wicked inventions of those nations which for their wicked life are fallen into the tempest and shall lay before them their evil thoughts and the torments wherewith they shall begin to be tormented, which are like an, unto a flame, and he shall destroy them without labor by the law, which is like unto me. And whereas thou sawest that he gathered another peaceable multitude unto him, Right. That's the same thing that's in the book of the Revelations. It says those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea, the king, whom Solomon Asher, the king of Assyria, led away captive and carried them over the waters. So came they into another land, which is here in the in the Americas. All right. And then this over here goes into, you know, how how they came here to the Americas, you know, verse 48. But those that be left behind of thy people are they that are found within my borders. Now when he destroyeth the multitude of the nations that are gathered together, he shall defend his people that remain. You see? So it's nothing but Israelites, man. It's not talking about no fucking heathen. Right? Because the book of Psalms chapter 2 goes into it and it says, Ask of me and I will give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. Which is what? Slavery. You see, it's not talking about no fucking, you know, uh, ask of the heathen and I'm going to give them to you as as co-heirs to your throne. That's fucking bullshit, man. You know, and if you brothers are not tired of Christianity by now, man, you know, I, I don't know what to tell you, man. All right, because you, you should be fucking completely tired of this world, completely tired of Christianity and the BS that they spill trying to put you back to sleep. Trying to give you the blue pill so you can go back to sleep like uh, Cypher did. All right. You got to want to know how deep the rabbit hole goes, man. You know, and these Christians look up to vocab alone and, and certain of their leaders for answers because they are too stupid to look into the scriptures to try and find it themselves, man. But the time is going to come when the elect are going to fully come out of this world. All right. And the preaching of this word has been going through the four corners of the earth. And eventually, whenever all this stuff starts picking back up with the coronavirus, which had already started a little bit, all right, but with the vaccines and the RFID chip and, and mandatory, uh, you know, um, what is it called? Uh, curfews. And all these things start happening. You're going to see these people trying to turn to us and we're not going to be there anymore, man. So get this truth while you still can, because it's going to be too late at one point, you know. So I hope that was edifying. And with that, I want to give all honor, glory, and praise to Yahweh Shimei Oshai, Bahashem Rakakwadash, Shalom.